Alright, peace guys, peace, peace. As you may or may not know, I'm working on posting a lot more hot takes on the biggest topics in sports, and this was one story that I simply just could not avoid. So I don't know if you've been following the news, but ESPN has been suffering from a PR nightmare stemming from an audio clip released by New York Times, where ESPN's NBA Jump host, Rachel Nichols, talks to LeBron James' rep about why she thinks Maria Taylor got to where she got to. And you want to know the reason why? Because she's black. <laughs> they said to me, hey, instead of hosting the NBA Finals, what did you do during the Sound Reporter job for the NBA Finals? Because guess what that was going to be for? Uh, for Maria to do the hosting for. Yeah. Yeah. So, I had declined. I don't know what their next move is, but they are feeling pressure because of all of that. And um, I'm trying to figure out, like, how to just, you know, my thing is that, I, you know, I wish Marie Taylor all the success in the world. She covers football, she covers basketball. If you need to give her more things to do because you're feeling pressure about your like, crappy long-time record on diversity, which, by the way, I myself, like, know personally from the female side of it, like, Nichols was obviously upset after being curbed for Taylor as the host of ESPN's NBA Countdown show. She claims Maria is in the spot she's in solely due to ESPN's lack of diversity within the company. And for context, this all started after news was leaked that Maria won that Stephen A. Smith money. Actually, Rachel's show, The Jump, has been taken off air after her apology this past Tuesday. First off, as someone who is a true believer in capitalism, I totally agree with her won that big payday, you dig? But that doesn't mean she deserves it. Maria is a natural on camera, something that I personally wasn't all that successful at myself. So it definitely takes some ability to appear personable and relatable to a large viewing audience on TV. Uh, on a side note, I'm not a very good actor, so that's probably part of it too, but, you know, that's another discussion for another day. But despite all the support Taylor is receiving, I actually agree with Rachel, and even someone who I personally don't like, uh, Steven Jackson. Many companies after the events of the George Floyd tragedy stress diversity and inclusion making them public that they will strive to hire more black folks and strive to create a more diverse and a more diverse and inclusive work environment. But Jack is right. Rachel, despite how she got the job, is way more credible of a reporter and a journalist than Marina Taylor is. I mean, let's just be honest here. She has interviewed countless of NBA players. She has worked the sidelines for the finals for a while now. And for good or bad, has put in the work, so you gotta give her credit there. And for Maria Taylor, someone who is basically a face and a host rather than an actual journalist, got the coveted NBA countdown hosting job, which Rachel Nichols was obviously gunning for. I just hate how these Negroes are all in for Maria despite the fact Rachel's right. But to play devil's advocate, Rachel did get her spot on WWE ESPN, you know, shout out to my boy Whitlock and Uncle Jimmy for that, because of her connection with Diane Sawyer. So, I mean, you can make arguments for both sides. But like I said before, Maria Taylor is talented and she's relatable. I hope she has much success in the future. I don't wish her any bad luck or anything. But in the grand scheme of things, she is ultimately replaceable. Listen to a quote from one of my favorite personalities in sports, Jason Whitlock, using a great analogy to explain the situation. Even a Smith's $8 million a year deal. Or that is crazy. It's a preposterous demand. Everyone knows it. Taylor doesn't know the position she plays. To use a football analogy, Taylor plays center and Stephen A. Smith plays quarterback. Smith is ESPN's franchise quarterback. He's Lamar Jackson. Viewers tune in to see him succeed or fail. On NBA Countdown, Taylor snaps the ball to journeyman quarterbacks Jalen Rose, Jay Williams, and Adrian Wojnarowski. Hmm. They are Jared Goff, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and Sam Darnold. You could replace Taylor with another center, Rachel Nichols, and no one would notice. 
The difference is Nichols can handle the physicality of playing in the NFL. Taylor can't. To be honest with you, most females' lifespan on ESPN usually equates with their looks. You know, most females' lifespan on ESPN usually equates with their looks, who they know, and, of course, the work you do. I liked female personalities like a Lindsay Zarniak, but once she got pregnant and aged, they simply can't her. The only other lady I can think of that has been on ESPN forever is Hannah Storm, who, by the way, has done it all at ESPN. But for someone like Rachel, her relationship to the former queen of ABC, Diane Sawyer, and she also has a connection via her father-in-law, who appears to be a big wig in Hollywood, was able to get her foot in the door, even though she was clearly not qualified for it to begin with. But let's put it like this. Maria is just a long line of women who will come and go at ESPN. To be quite frank with you, no one will really care. She doesn't really provide the value that someone like a Stephen A. Smith does, as he's been the face of ESPN for what seems like ever now. <laughs> so, rightfully so. I think this is a result of the ego and the power trip a lot of black women are going through since these companies and corporations are doing a whole lot of shucking and jiving. <laughs> like we say, uh, they've been praising them, shining light on them, you know, saying that God's gift the green earth and all this other baloney, but they just like you and me. <laughs> Hell, sometimes even worse. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll save that for later. But um, but to go back on Rachel's point, I see nothing wrong with her comments. But it really goes back to how certain black folks, pro blacky black people, act like they don't care what white people think about them. But then they turn around and get outraged about what those same white people think. <laughs> I hate them crackers. I hate the white man. Two hours later. Hey, how you doing, sir? Pleased to meet you. Whatever I can get you, you let me know. <laughs> Soon as the white man get out of sight, he's like, cracker ass cracker. <laughs> cracker ass cracker. I'll put my foot in the cracker ass cracker ass cracker. I wish that cracker would have said some shit to me. Saltine ass motherfucking cracker. Mother, motherfucker. Cracker kiss my ass, you fucking cracker. <laughs> white man come back. Howdy, sir. <laughs> And all y'all calling for Rachel's head, she's not going to get fired. <laughs> I'm telling you that right now, bro. Her connections are too deep, first and foremost. And at the very least, this is how they'll operate. They'll put her on-air appearances on ice because the basketball season's pretty much over. I mean, what, there's a series left. <laughs> and they already played the first game of that. And the fact that most people have a very short memory to begin with, most likely a lot of people's outrage will be gone by the time the next basketball season starts. So Maria will likely be gone and either ESPN hires someone else to host the NBA countdown pre and post game show or Miss Nichols slides right into that opportunity. She's so been death. Just to wrap this whole soliloquy up, this definitely seems like a, a fake and contrived story to me. And just so happens that after Maria Taylor's salary dispute with ESPN, the New York Times just happens to release the tape of Rachel Nichols talking about Maria. Uh, exactly when, you know, there was a leverage war going on between her and her representation in ESPN. But we have to remember, folks, today's modern media is all about entertainment. And what is the topic that sells more than sex? Racial conflict. <laughs> ESPN, even before this, was in a bad spot. They were losing a lot of their top personalities, like they lost Dan Lebertard, they lost Amin Al Hassan, who works for Dan, um, they lost, I mean, there's so many other people that they lost right now, I mean, I can't think of them right now, but they lost so many people, it's ridiculous. And they're cutting people, and they're cutting salaries too. Um, that's the main reason why, you know, Kenny, people like Kenny Maine left. And overall ratings are just down in general. And Maria Taylor may be the next person that falls in this line. To me, this is the reason why feminism is all bullshit. Because most of these women hate each other. And most, because most of these women hate each other. <laughs> and this, and this should show you right here. But again, that's a deeper video for another day. So we gonna save that for later. Thanks guys for making it to this point. Don't forget to support this channel by hitting that like and subscribe button. And make sure you comment down below and ask me what and who I should talk about next. And until next time, guys, peace.